Welcome to Ask an Innovator. My name is Cole Snell. I will be your host today. I have some amazing guests here on Ask an Innovator. We love a good story. The best stories are those requiring strength and courage. Today's guests, Dallas, Taryn, and Wyatt, account for these emotionally delicious ingredients and more. This trifecta climb, they climb. They actually really climb. We're going to talk about climbing, literally climbing successfully. They run a business literally built around climbing, the ladders of success. Welcome to the show, guys. Uh, I am so delighted to have you. This is the first time we've actually had a family on the show. This is pretty interesting. Um, I had a bit of a script here that I was going to follow, and just kind of meeting Taryn and Wyatt, I wanted to kind of throw things off a little bit, and I wanted to, um, I wanted to go right into a definition. I said the word courage when I was introducing you, and I wrote down the word, the definition of the word courage here. The, the definition of the word courage is the ability to do something that frightens one. Talking to you guys before you came on camera, you had a little bit of kind of trepidation to be on the camera and be on the show. Let's talk about courage. You're, you are both super courageous being here on this set and, and coming here on TV to do this. It's really cool. Can you talk a little bit about it? How do you feel? Do you feel courageous? I feel more nervous than courageous. Do you feel nervous? Yeah, yes. that's great. Taryn, how do you feel? Yeah, more nervous. Isn't it a little, it's a little bit nerve-wracking, right? Yeah. yeah. This is about the... Um, this is about the, probably the 12th show that I've done, and I'm still a little bit nervous. I can talk really easily, but, so I, but I, I'm still nervous, and the very first show I ever did, I was, uh, I was super nervous. So do, do, you, do you guys consider yourself to be courageous? Let me read the definition of courage, courage again to you. It's, uh, the definition of courage is to have the ability to do something that frightens one. So do you think you're courageous being here today? Uh, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I would say that you are. Taryn, how do you feel? Do you feel courageous? Sure. You do? Yeah. Great. So do you think it's, uh, we're going we're gonna to ask Dad, Dallas, we're going to ask Dallas some, some questions really quickly here. I'm not just going to talk to you guys all afternoon. Um, do you think that opening up a new business is courageous? Yeah. Yeah. You sure. Did you have something to do with Dad opening up Boulderberry, your climbing gym? Yeah. I would say we you did. did. Yeah. So Dallas, your story is fantastic. Tell us about how you came from where you were to where you are today. Um, we, I was policing in Dryden. Mm -hmm. um, I'd been there for about 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, climbing had always been a huge part of my life. Um, so, and opening a gym was always something that was on in the back of your mind. You kind of, if you have that, you never really let it go. Mm -hmm. The policing career was starting to be something that I didn't really enjoy. I always enjoyed parts of it, but, and it was actually the kids who kind of sense that you know you're not happy doing this and mm. and it was Taryn that said to me you always are telling us to follow our dreams so if you're telling us that and you're not doing it how would you get to tell us that that's so, amazing yes yeah, so amazing like, wow and I think she was like seven seven or eight at the time yeah <laughs> great and Taryn how old are you today 13 13 and you're in grade eight yeah right and so you were dishing out advice to <laughs> adults at an early age that's pr that's pretty amazing. That shows a lot of leadership. And so and so Dallas, I guess you 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 listened to to the advice. Yeah, it just things sort of finally fell into place where we were able to move back um, and switch some things around so that I could yeah. could leave policing and had switched over our retirement to uh, to get a loan to open up the gym. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, the business side of this, we're going to talk about in a couple segments. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, I, I'm fascinated, but first off, there's two, two businesses that I'm fascinated by. I'm, I'm fascinated by policing. I personally have a ton of respect for police officers. I think you guys are complete and absolute heroes. Um, I'm also fascinated by entrepreneurs. Can you draw any parallels between being a police officer and being an entrepreneur? But I think they're pretty different. Mm -hmm. um, Policing was definitely you. The good things about policing were when you're there, you're there um, on shift. But the parallel is now that I'm working for myself, it's I can't really turn off my phone. But when, <laughs> I, when I was a police officer, mm -hmm. especially in a smaller community, everybody associates you with he's a police officer. Right. So you never really 
able to shut that off either. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I have a, a similar experience. I mean, owning a business in Thunder Bay, I feel like I'm kind of under the spotlight all the time, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. Um, but being a police officer in a small community, you must really feel that, that would you say it's pressure uh, being kind of a man of the law in a small community? It, it, people definitely are always looking or quick to call if they see or perceive you to be doing something. Right kind of yeah. <laughs> outside of what they think you should be doing. Sure, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely, it's, it's you're sort of always under that microscope, right. so to speak. Yeah. Do you think that's an attribute or um, a type of pressure that has helped you in um, you know, having the courage, again, to open up uh, your business? Hmm. I honestly never really thought of that. Uh, yeah. I, I think the police, the pressures that you deal with in policing, Mm -hmm. When you switch it over to like business, the business pressure seems so much less serious. If I make a mistake in business, it's not life threatening. Mm. Nobody's going to pay for it with um, incarceration or the wrong tickets, right. or I'm not really wrecking anybody's day. Right. Um, whereas if I made mistakes in policing, yeah, then the consequences could be a lot more severe. Interesting. Um, so. I, I find that fascinating, actually, that, that you, a lot of people, they leave a comfortable job and they go into being an entrepreneur or self-employed and they feel almost the exact opposite. So kind of hearing you, it's almost like policing has really prepped you in a lot of ways for, to make this maybe not as difficult as some would perceive it to be. Yeah, I think things that might stress other business owners out, mm. like the financial and things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's never been my personality. I mean, if, if there's food and things like that, then I don't get worried about it. But right. so that kind of stuff is, like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter what we do. The sun's coming up tomorrow. So we're just going to muddle through and it, it'll work itself out. So amazing. With, yeah. That's a great, a great attitude <laughs> to have. Um, let's talk a little bit about Thunder Bay. Um, you, are you guys now, uh, Taryn and Wyatt, you guys were born and, and bred in Thunder Bay. You're from Thunder Bay. Is that right? No. Uh, no. No. Oh, wow. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. Where are you from? Dryden. Dryden. Oh, you were born in Dryden and yeah. then moved to Thunder Bay. Okay. We were born, I was born in Thunder Bay, uh, but then I moved back to Dryden. <laughs> then we came back here. All right. So Not back quite. and forth, Dryden, Thunder Bay. <laughs> he was born yeah. in Thunder Bay, but never lived in Thunder Bay when gotcha. he was born. He was just born at the hospital here. Gotcha. Fair enough. <laughs> And Dallas, mm -hmm. where, uh, tell, tell us your story. Where are you I, from? I grew up in Thunder Bay. We yeah. did all my schooling here. Um, moved to Dryden in 2001 mm -hmm. for policing and stayed there until 2014. Mm -hmm. And then the three of us all moved back to Thunder Bay together in 2014 sometime. Amazing. Do you love running a business in Thunder Bay? Yeah, I do. I, yeah. I think I would love running this business anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I really like Thunder Bay. Mm -hmm. I think Thunder Bay is kind of a hidden gem, right? And people don't realize what we have here. Like we have everything. It might not be the biggest of everything, but mm -hmm. everything we have is close and accessible. We've got tons of lakes for like we do a lot of wake surfing. Oh yeah! In the summer, and we have a camp like 20 minutes from. It's kind of like a crossover sport: climbing and <laughs> and wake surfing. Yeah. <laughs> so and our, the climbing is world class. Like there's 20 areas within an hour of town, so it, it is considered to be world class. The climbing around Thunder Bay. Yeah, and ice climbing in the in the winter. Is yeah, like people come from all over the world to climb ice here. So we've actually had guests on the show that don't have any real interest in climbing, and they've actually pointed out we al we often talk in the show of the benefits of being in Thunder Bay and why Thunder Bay is such a fantastic place, not just to raise children but to actually run a business. And they actually point out sometimes that the outdoors, and they specifically say the climbing, even yeah. though they don't know anything about it, they still know that it's an actual, it's a point of interest. Yeah, it's, we, we're definitely really lucky. And we've got some, some people within the climbing, climbing community that are just endless balls of energy that are out developing areas and developing routes nonstop. When we come back from the commercial, we're going to talk a little bit more about developing business in Thunder Bay and some of the challenges that go along with it. Stay with us. Ask an Innovator. Welcome back to Ask an Innovator. I have some amazing guests, guests that literally like to climb the ladders of success. We have Dallas, Wyatt, and Taryn. 
they uh, run an amazing business in town, a climbing gym called Boulder Bear. There's a, a, a quote I couldn't resist, a George Mallory quote off camera just before we came back. I was talking to Wyatt and Taryn about um, George Mallory and dad, AKA Dallas was explaining who uh, George Mallory was. So I'll read the quote and then we're gonna ask, ask um, Dallas to explain George Mallory a little bit more to the kids because it was, it was kind of cool. Here's the quote. We do not live to eat and make money. We eat and make money to be able to enjoy life. Dallas, uh, maybe explain to your, your son and daughter <laughs> who George Mallory is. Um, he was a mountaineer and had hundreds of first ascents through his mountaineering career all over all over the world, mostly in Europe. Pretty pretty amazing guy. Um, I, and I think that you know the metaphor, we love metaphors and the metaphor in business to uh, you know literally climbing the ladders of success. George Mallory loves life through climbing. Um, do you do you guys love life through climbing? Is is life more enjoyable climbing than it is say uh, policing? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So is life more enjoyable climbing than it is going to school? Yep, it is great. So um, why you're also into judo? And I asked you a question before again off camera. Um, now you you climb about three days a week, and Terry yeah. you climb about five days a week. So you got you got a couple more days on your brother. Um, so why do you uh, do you pick judo or uh, climbing? I have no idea. You can't answer I the like question? them both equally. Do you? All I right. just can't answer that. Okay, we'll let you go down. The, we'll let you split the hairs then. Go 50-50. And Taryn, what do you think about climbing? Um, do you love it? Yeah. When, when you explain to kids at school, say, what you do, and you're in grade 8, when you explain to kids at school what you do, what are the response that kids give you from, from being a, a climber? They say they're afraid of heights, so that's why they don't want to do it. Right. Do you ever see people come into the gym who are afraid of heights? Yeah. Yeah. And what, what, what's their response? Do you, do, they, do you find that they get to the top of the wall? Most of the time. Yeah. Are you encouraging them? Uh, yeah. I bet you are. That's amazing. So Dallas, do you find a lot of a sense of fulfillment? I mean, I really, again, back to the metaphor of climbing. I mean, it's such a, a great way to create inspiration. Do you see people coming in? Do you, do you think you're changing people's lives? I, I think we're introducing a lot of people Mm -hmm. to a different option, um, mm. especially in smaller northwestern Ontario towns mm. where these type of activities aren't the norm. Mm -hmm. When they come into the gym, I always, and I, it's, it's kind of funny you say that, is because I always tease first time climbers like, well, are you ready for your life to change? Um, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> awesome, perfect. Because a lot of people will, we don't get a lot of one time visitors mm. um people do get really wrapped up in it mm -hmm. and then like after you've tried it and you, you're not i always joke you're, you're never gonna look at a highway rock cut the same way again you're gonna be looking for right. how do i <laughs> climb that or yeah um so yeah it, it i don't know if i'm changing lives i'm giving them another outlet mm -hmm. to sort of deal with their life right amazing well said we use um we have a, quite a few um Gym owners say, uh, uh, whether it be weightlifting gyms or we've had CrossFit um, gym owners, uh, and we, we, the response is always really good. Now, in your gym, you have weights and yeah. you have uh, elaborate climbing walls. Uh, it's pretty. It's very impressive. Um, the relationship between the physical, say, and the emotional aspects of it. I imagine climbing a wall and getting to the top is very emotionally uh, rewarding. Talk about the, the relationship between the physical and the emotional uh, of climbing. Well, physically um, is obviously a part of it, mm -hmm. and but the emotional or mental side of climbing is a huge piece of the puzzle, uh, especially as your climbing career gets further and the challenges start to increase. You can you can be as strong as you want, but if you can't control your mind in certain situations, you're not going to be successful. Mm. Um, and the roots that we put up with the plastic rocks, we try and make it challenging in a way that it's not just essentially pulling up a really steep ladder that you have to figure out how to turn my body or so that it's huh. a mental puzzle that you have to unlock with your body. Um, and then when you take that outside, it develops into a whole nother game. And Interesting. Yeah. When I, when I see, when I'm at your, your gym and I see more experienced uh, climbers, they're, they're staring at the root. And they're sometimes, are, what are they doing when they're staring at the root? So a, a good way to, 
to kind of let you in on what they're doing is like you guys were at the competition that we had right and if you noticed that like Taryn and Wyatt and all the kids that were dressed the way they were dressed to make it look very easy the, <laughs> <laughs> the competition team we do practices where that they go to the climb that they're going to climb and they have to sort of rehearse it in their mind first so they can see themselves doing it mm -hmm. and then I'll get them to talk to me about where do you think the hard parts are going to be how do you think your body's going to move up the wall where do you think the rests are going to be can you rest is there anywhere you can rest before the hardest part of the climb mm. um, so they're basically planning out and visualizing what they're going to do before they do it mm -hmm. would you say that mental toughness or physical strength is more important than one or the other when it comes to climbing it, I, I don't think you could put one above the other. Mm -hmm. It depends on where you enter into climbing because the person who's coming in the door for the first time, they be, may be physically strong but terrified of heights. Mm. So they're going to have to overcome that hurdle. Or someone who comes in who may not be quite as physically fit or physically able mm -hmm. but has no problem with heights, then they're on the other end of the spectrum. So. It just depends on where, where your jump off mm -hmm. point is. And then that kind of shortcoming, or not shortcoming, but that problem that you have to solve is going to follow you through your, your climbing career. So as you advance your physical strength, you might not have to work as hard as when you start lead climbing and different types of climbing. Mm -hmm. You may have to work on your mental toughness to overcome different types of climbing more than your physical toughness or flip it over. If Interesting. You're not, yeah. Is there a tradition in, say, with expert climbers, is there a tradition, um, obviously training the physical aspect of it, weightlifting and stretching and it all clearly plays into it. Uh, is there a tradition that climbers, say, would uh, participate in uh, meditation or visualization or is, is there a tradition in any kind of, say, um, like psychosomatic or spiritual rituals that they do? There, it, there wasn't. Um, I wouldn't say that there's a tradition mm -hmm. because climbing on a competitive basis is relatively, it's older, but it's new. Mm -hmm. um, climbing is going to be in the Olympics in 2020. Right. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So That's with, amazing. Yeah. So with that comes a lot of, okay, now there's a lot of coaching. And so as far as athlete training for outside traditional climbers, there wasn't a lot of buy-in to that mm -hmm. because it's always been such a recreational it, it's kind of following the same trajectory as snowboarding was oh, right. when snowboarding got into the olympics then they picked up on hey we should cross train for this and we should do mental training for this and we should do so now you see like the high-end climbers um like taryn and i go up to bc for training camps mm -hmm. they do all the mental training they do climber yoga they do meditation they their teams out there do all uh, that kind of stuff interesting. So, we're trying to bring that back right. to our competitive team and catch up the outdoor community with all the new, younger, hard chargers. Yeah. So it's sort of, it's an interesting balance. It'll be really neat to see where it goes in the next four or five years. I'd have to say that uh, when I went climbing for the first time, which wasn't that long ago at your gym, and I went up the easiest route, um, and I was on the auto belay. Am I saying this properly? I was on the auto belay. I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. And I got to the top, I'm not afraid of heights, and I decided to let go. It's for some reason my hands wouldn't do it. My <laughs> mind said go, but my hands wouldn't, and I have no problem with heights. Apparently, it, it, for anybody, it must, it was, and I, that first time, and I'm thinking, I'm looking at this gizmo thinking, it better click in. And the descent was almost as fun as, as going up. Yeah. Um, when we come back from the break, we're gonna talk a little bit more about what it takes to run a business. We're gonna talk about some of the successes and the challenges, and. We're gonna get the, uh, the kids to uh, weigh in on uh, what they think it's like to uh, run a business as well. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ask an Innovator. I am with a family of climbers, a family of people who are looking to climb the, literally climb the ladders of success. Uh, again, off camera, I kind of preempted a question that I was going to ask uh, Taryn. Taryn, what do you love about climbing? And maybe tell us a couple technical things about climbing. What are some climbing, mm. what are some climbing terminal, what's some climbing terminology? 
Um, Hit me with a climbing word that I might not know. What equipment do you use? There's harnesses, shoes, chalk bags. Um. Chalk bags are pretty neat. <laughs> the knots that you tie, what are, do you know the, the names of some of the knots? The figure eight knot. Figure eight knot, that's a key knot in climbing. I'm still <laughs> trying to figure that out. And what's another knot that you have? Um, I forget the name. You guys use the overhand eight when you teach knots? Mm -hmm. The overhand eight, sounds technical. Wyatt, what's your favorite part about climbing? I don't know, it's just like I, it's fun. I, other people would have different reasons. It, it's just, it's calming and it takes your mind off of everything. Wow, that's amazing. So if you're having a bad day at school and you go to the, the gym, do you find that um, after running, climbing a couple routes that the, the problems of the day fade away? Kinda, it's just like you fo focus more on what you're doing mm -hmm. at the moment than what happened in the past. Interesting, that is very profound. I, I love that, that is <laughs> totally amazing. I'm gonna <laughs> look, screw up my mic. I'm gonna give you a fist bump too because I don't wanna hurt, hurt my mic. That was, that was very, very deep. And actually on this show, that's a lot of what we look for is we kind of look for the bind, mind, body, and soul of innovation. And, and you just talked about the mind, body, and soul of, of innovation right there. I think that's, that's absolutely amazing. So um, would you say that climbing is therapeutic? I don't even know the meaning of that so, word. I, well, you just, you just, and there's honesty. We, we, on the show, we love honesty and we love vulnerability. So you were just totally honest. So thanks for not pretending you do. <laughs> you essentially just described it. So it's healing. It's, it's good for your body, it's good for your mind, essentially, is what, what, yeah, you, what it you think is. it is. Yeah, it is. Great. What do the kids at school uh, say to you when you tell them that you, uh, your family owns a climbing gym? They seem really surprised. I honestly don't know half of what they're feeling inside, but I can just tell that they're surprised. Yeah. What, is the, what does the look on their face do? I, I don't know. Are they excited? That. Do they think it's interesting? Are they jealous? Do they I don't know how they feel. Yeah, amazing. Um, Dallas, we're talking uh, a little bit about the uh, the successes and the challenges of running a business. How do you feel? Um, how do you feel about uh, running? How, how old is your business now? It'll be coming up on two years in on, March. On two years yeah. in March, and uh, how do you feel about the the state of your business? Are you happy with the way things are going? I think so. I mm. mean, we definitely nothing's a smooth road, and if I think. If, it would be it wouldn't be fun mm -hmm. um but I, I mean i have no complaints mm -hmm. it's it's good we're, we're paying all of our bills and yeah that's great yeah fantastic um the uh community of thunder bay i think thunder bay is going through an amazing period right now there's a lot of innovation happening i'm assuming there you do you have any competition in town if you want to call it that are there any other climbing gyms other there, than yours there's no other climbing gyms mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and we try, there's one other climbing company. Mm -hmm. um, he does outside like programs and things right. like that. We only sort of cross paths and offer the same, sort of the same thing in the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, but he's, he's a great guy. Um, no, like I wouldn't even say it's competition. Like if we're too busy to do something, I would send people to him. Mm -hmm. Or if there's something that there's some places that it just I don't want to send my staff and I know that he does, I'll send them over there. And if there's been times where he's come and helped us out or we've gone and helped him out and yeah. we'll develop different areas, like it's it's very, very friendly. Like there's enough right for everybody. So it sounds almost in a way that you are developing a culture. A culture and innovation, the two words are very tied. I have the definition of the word culture here. The ideas, customs, and social behavior characteristics of a particular social group. So I love that you don't look at, say, the other uh, group as, say, competition, but rather it's uh, a community and it's a culture that you're, you're creating. And this is a good segue to a, another little quote that I have. I have a Mark Twain quote, believe it or not. Mark Twain has a, has a quote about cl climbing. There is probably no pressure equal to the pleasure of climbing a dangerous alp, but it is a pleasure which is confined strictly to people who can find pleasure within it. So again, when I hear that quote, I think of a culture. I think certain people get it, some, some people don't. Different things are pleasurable to different people. Um, 
the, is there is there a lot of pleasure in running your own business? I, I find it, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a definitely a lot of really positive things that come out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially when you come from a career like policing, I couldn't bring my kids to work. I couldn't. Right. My dog is always at the gym. I couldn't bring my dog to work. I couldn't phone and say, "Hey, this." opportunity for a trip came up so I'm going to be gone for three weeks and those things are all things I can do now at the right. climbing gym and these are the dreams of being your own boss right. you're exactly. painting a picture for for anybody <laughs> to go what advice would you have for the person who wants to take and follow in your steps leave a job to better their their, their lifestyle to find pleasure within their their new career what advice would you give to people I would say don't rush into anything mm -hmm. like we did do it but i put a lot of thought into everything before mm -hmm. um i did it and was quite certain that i wouldn't be leaving like, it's hard to leave a job where you're guaranteed a pension and you have a good salary like those jobs don't exist in society that much anymore they don't you're right um to take a gamble like that so if you're going to take a gamble like that sort of really have all your ducks in a row and maybe have a backup plan. Mm -hmm. um, Did you have a backup plan? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. You just took Taryn's encouragement and, and, and kind of went for it. Put in your two weeks at the police department, see you later, I'm going to open yeah. up a climbing gym. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Yeah, I would be back to yeah. skiing or something. Right, right. right. <laughs> so, um, so that would be a good one, have a backup plan. Um, and if I think, and my a friend of mine who we never really have anything nice to say to each other. It's just one of those fun kind of, and he texted me when the gym first opened. He's like, I'd like to say something mean, but people who follow their dreams always seem to succeed. Awesome. So if well done. Yeah. If you're following something that you're yeah. passionate about, you're going to put the work love into it, it to yeah. succeed. So I love it. That's amazing. Um, well, we're going to uh, wind things up here. Um, I'm, I am so sincerely humbled to host, host, ask an innovator guests like Dallas, Taryn and Wyatt allow me to look deep within myself, providing me with a vision as to those ingredients that must come together in building a great community. Dallas has provided our community with an innovative culture designed toward upward movement, striving to reach the pinnacles of success, whatever they may be. Thank you guys so much for being on the show. You're amazing guests and I think you've inspired our community and you've created a culture and I know that you're, uh, you're gonna go on to do amazing, great things. Thanks for joining Ask an Innovator. Join us next week.